Hi folks, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all having a good week so far. I have definitely enjoyed having a few days break after finishing Inktober and like many others who've managed to complete the challenge, in today's video I'll be doing a flip through of all the 31 ink paintings I completed throughout Inktober. But instead of talking about each individual painting, I'm going to be telling you a few of the reasons why I decided to take part in the Inktober challenge in the first place and share with you exactly how I did it, what worked out as well as some tips to avoid the bits that didn't go quite according to plan. This I thought might be useful for those of you who are thinking about taking part in the challenge next time or even for those of you who might still be working on it and want to see it through to the end. If you'd like to know more about any of the paintings I'm showing you in today's video, I'll link my Inktober playlist in a card above, and don't forget if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the box below. I do read and respond to all of them and really enjoy hearing from you. Please also consider subscribing if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified of videos as I upload them. So why did I do Inktober again this year? Well, several reasons really, but the main one is simple, to become more confident and competent in my art abilities. I wanted to improve my accuracy and my techniques, I wanted to practice what I knew and I also wanted to experiment with what I didn't know. I saw Inktober as an opportunity, or even an excuse, to draw and paint every day for 31 days. Without the challenge, I may have either reasoned that I didn't have time or I was just too tired. The fact that it was an official challenge made me determined to succeed. And it wasn't as if I'd never done it before either. I finished Inktober last year without too many problems, so I made my mind up to do it again this year. Now as well as improving my general drawing and painting skills, I also wanted to work on getting quicker at editing, so I thought I'd add to my Inktober challenge and commit to uploading a speed paint of the day's drawings as well. I'm really keen to grow my YouTube channels and I thought Inktober would be the perfect way to provide regular arty content to anyone willing to take a look. And that is the beauty of a challenge like Inktober. The main goal is simple. Do a drawing in ink every day for 31 days and post it on social media. How you choose to interpret it is up to you. And that too is a real advantage. It means it's open to everyone, big, small, young, old, student or professional. Anyone can take part. It's also a great way to share your art and become part of a huge art community. A community that can also encourage and support you, inspire you even, and in the process you get to discover what you like, what you don't like, and you can have so much fun with it. You can try new tools, styles and textures, it's really up to you, but the great thing is that regular practice makes for progress, and Inktober can get you into the good habit of drawing every day and it doesn't have to end on the 31st of October. But with all this being said, before I go into telling you how I did this challenge, let me just tell you a few things about Inktober that you might not have heard, just to give you a balanced view. Things that you need to know if this is a challenge you're thinking of taking on in the future. You might also want to watch another video here on YouTube by Mark Campbell entitled What You Should Know About Inktober But No One Will Tell You. It's really useful and informative and worth checking out, so I'll link it either in the card above or in the description box below. So here's the thing, Inktober is hard work. 31 days of rejigging your schedule to fit in drawing time is hard work and for me juggling three kids, a part-time job, pets, a home, school runs, meals and Inktober was hard work. It takes up a lot of time. And what time we set aside for the challenge can be unrealistic and the reality can be very different. You also need to consider that everyone can have good days when you feel like you can draw anything. You're improving, it's working, but that can be followed by a bad day when you feel like you can't even hold a pencil properly and that can leave you feeling demotivated and fed up. So how did I do it then? Well, I'm going to share with you a few things I did this year as well as a few things I've learned for next year and if anyone else has any tips or advice, I would love you to comment and share that below. So the first important tip is to be organized. So decide before Inktober starts what materials you're gonna use. And 
and you don't have to go and spend a lot of money on expensive supplies just use what you have so the only thing that I bought this time round was paper because I was really keen to try out some cold press paper and my coloured inks on that but all the, the inks and things that I used I did already have so don't go spending lots of money it's really not necessary just have what use what you have the second tip I have is to decide whether or not you're going to follow the prompt list and that comes out on the 1st of September or it did this year anyway so you have got some time to think about that prompt list and prepare as well you can also decide at this point if you're going to have a theme so where I had my animal theme other people have chosen different themes as well there's also different prompt lists so you can decide what you're going to draw each day before the month even starts and this can save you a huge amount of time especially if some of the prompts can be a little bit tricky and might require a little bit of research certainly with some of the word prompts this year I did struggle a little bit and it did take me a little bit of research and time to figure out which animal would fit the prompts so the next tip I have is as well as choosing what paper you're going to use what size paper you're going to use because I decided to use 10 by 8 inch paper and this was actually smaller than some of the pieces I did last year so I thought it would be a really good standard size piece of paper but actually it's quite large and when I looked on Instagram or other people's posts I did see some people doing um, pictures on almost small like five by five size pieces of paper and they were really really amazing and I really enjoyed watching those little um, illustrations every day so it hasn't got to be a big piece of paper I think last year when I did it I also used a moleskin sketchbook so that was a lot smaller and so it felt a lot easier to kind of get my drawing done every day I did only do the larger pictures for the four videos that I did per month so I just did one recording of a video each week rather than every day so next year I might think about doing a smaller sized paper and that again will save a little bit of time and as I said I did want to do a video upload every day this challenge and I'm glad I did but again it was really hard work because I had to kind of plan my day out to make sure that I was doing the painting in the morning and I kind of set myself a schedule so I did painting in the morning to make use of the daylight I then edited in the afternoon and tried to sort of limit the time that I was doing the painting and the editing to fit it all in and I've seen other people doing a weekly video instead of a daily video and that can be a good idea as well if you want to share some of the paintings that you've done either as a speed paint or in real time so instead of doing a video every day if that was something that you'd want to do you could do one video a week and do days 1 to 7 and then days 8 to 14 and so on so that can be a little bit more easy to manage if you didn't want to do a daily upload so another tip I've got is to try limiting the colours you're going to use so I think when Jake Parker started this challenge he was just using fine liners and like a pen and ink and line drawings and I think since he started the challenge it's gone a bit mad and everyone's been using all sorts of different coloured inks applying them with paint brushes um, using fine liners using markers and all sorts of things so it's a bit of a minefield but if you want to simplify it you could um, just limiting try limiting your color palette so I've seen other people who've done the challenge on Instagram again and they've just used like three colored inks or so and again that can be a way of simplifying your inktober challenge so I did mention about planning out a schedule and I think that was the main thing that helped me to succeed this time round. Because time is tight, we're all really busy, we've all got different commitments and responsibilities and I think 
by having quite a strict time limit and um, a schedule to make sure that you get everything done, you can do it. And some days I didn't think I was going to be able to because originally I'd aimed to take between one or maybe even two hours to do a painting but as you've heard me say in previous videos some of them did take an awful lot longer and that did make me a bit anxious some days that I wouldn't get um, enough daylight to finish the paintings and then I'd have to go and pick the children up from school and still do the editing and all that kind of thing so as much as I would say planning is everything and trying to be organized is everything you've still got to have a little bit of wiggle room and I think it's really important not to beat yourself up if you don't get to do it one day it's not the end of the world so lastly I would say that it's really important to realize that it is not a competition now some people do seem to be seeing it like that this year but whilst it is great to see how others are doing or how they are interpreting prompts and that kind of thing, I don't think you should compare yourself to others in a negative way. So rather look forward to seeing how you have improved over the course of the month and accept also that some days it will be hard and if you offer words of encouragement and support to others during the challenge, maybe on social media, then they in return can be a huge source of support and encouragement to you too. So finally, I would say remember that it is supposed to be fun. If you miss a day, as I said, it's not the end of the world. If you can only do two days per week, then that's better than no days a week. Do what you can and do what fits in with your schedule. Take part and do the best that you can for you. So I really hope this video has helped shed some light on the Inktober challenge. I hope you've liked it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.